Well, it's hard for most of us to imagine just having 10 children, but for seven of them to have started college by the age of 12, well, that's just unreal. If you have to see them to believe them. So we want you to take a look. Here's the story of a lovely couple bringing up 10 very brainy kids. Seven of them started college by the age of 12, and the three younger ones are well on their way. They're the Harding family. You can call them the Brainy Bunch. Hi, my name is Keith Harding, and I'm 15 years old. Keith just graduated with a bachelor's degree in music. This has been kind of my high school experience and my college experience kind of thrown together in one. In the library, you'll find his sister. Hi, my name's Katrina Harding. I hope to be a lawyer when I grow up. I just got my high school diploma, and now I'm working on my college degree, and I'm 11 years old. Hello, I'm Seth Harding, and I'm a sophomore here at Huntington College, and uh, I'm a history major, and my plans are to become an archaeologist, and I'm only 13. 17-year-old Heath has a master's degree in computer science. One of the perks of graduating early was, uh, well, I can retire early, I guess. <laughs> That's pretty good. In their book, The Brainy Bunch, parents Kip and Mona Lisa Harding share how a simple homeschooling method accelerates their kids' learning and gives them the freedom to pursue their passions. Like Serena, who's a doctor for the U.S. Navy. She graduated college at 17. Rosanna was 18 and is now an architect. Hannah earned her first degree when she was 17. She's working on her Ph.D. And the younger ones, they have their dreams, too. Hi, my name is Mariana, and I want to be a baby doctor and weigh babies and give them checkups. And I am eight years old. Six-year-old Lorena wants to be a pediatrician. So I can see the babies. And Thunder wants to be a superhero. Green Lantern, oh, yes. The Hardings say even with all the focus on education, their top priority is family and growing in God's Word. My faith in Jesus is the most important thing to me. Um, I would not be here if it was not for my Savior because there were, there were some hard times. While this bunch really is brainy, they know it takes more than just smarts to be successful. Making sure that I, I don't squander the opportunities I've been given and make my parents proud. If you work really hard, it's eventually going to pay off. They actually listened to what their parents told them. Please welcome to the 700 Club, the parents of the Brainy Bunch, Kip and Mona Lisa Harding. It's good to have hey, you both hey, with thank us. You. Thank you so much. I want to talk about so many things about your family, but Kip, first of all, let's just establish your children are not technically geniuses. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, we're just an average family, and, and the, the kids take the ACT very young, and, and uh, we, we start following their interests, and, and we start finding finding some great results early on. And, and so it appears that they're geniuses, but they're really not. Well, some of it is the whole method that you've been using over the years. But Mona Lisa, talk a little bit about homeschooling. You know, a lot of people hear that and they kind yeah. of clutch. Yeah. What made you decide to make a choice like that? I think people tense up, I guess, because they think they have to teach their child everything about yes. everything. And, no mom can do that. That would be impossible. That's yeah. too much. And I think mm -hmm. in the in the process, I tried that in the beginning. And we <laughs> we thankfully I have a visionary husband who who helped me focus on what was important. You know, the main thing is teaching them God's word. Yeah. And uh, from there, um, he started to ask them what they were interested in. And you could see what your kids are leaning towards. You know, is one an artist and maybe isn't that great at math or or we have a musician, you know, or, or, or someone who's really right-brained and like science and engineering and, and maybe can't draw a stick man. You know, they have their strengths and we emphasize those well, more. Well, obviously, whatever you have done, you've done well because all of them have. It's not like somebody said, boy, this isn't my niche. You know, <laughs> I need to bail out of this. I mean, you've kept them all growing and advancing. How would you describe to someone the technique that you've discovered that makes that work for you? Technique, I guess it's just um, letting them go at their pace. And ah. so if they're weak in certain areas, we spend more time on that. 
Because, yeah. in, but if they're ready to move on and skip a few grades in math, we allow that. And so you end up with an 11 or 12 year old who's ready to take some college classes. Kip, how involved are you in all of this? Uh, very much so. As she said, the visionary, uh, I, I see myself as a principal role. Ah. And, um, but part of that vision is when you capture what the children are interested in, then you, they, they can see themselves doing something. So you sort of backward in, backwards engineer the career field that they're looking like they want to do and uh, aim their curriculum towards that. So it, it's just a, a really good he's, way to He's go. very good at what you say, connecting the dots, you know, explaining mm -hmm. to our daughter, uh, Rosanna, when she wanted to be an architect and didn't want to do her geometry homework, and when mm -hmm. she could connect the dots, and he did that for the her. The why of it the goes, geometry. Yeah, you're going to mm -hmm. need this for physics, because you ah. need that in order to build a very yeah. good building. And, so and here so. you are, you've invested all of this uh, character building mm -hmm. and, you know, spiritual investment in your children in addition to the, the academic investment, mm -hmm. and then you send them off to college at such a young age. Do you kind of gulp when you do that? I mean, they've all handled it well. well. It, it's, uh, sending them off seems a little hard, and in Rosanna's case, that was, that was the case because she was an architect and she ended up studying in, the... in western Alabama. She did rural studio there. And so that was really sending her off, and that was hard on us. But she had that; she was an independent type person. For the majority of their kids, actually, we're starting them very slowly, one, two classes tops. But then we find by that second semester, they already want a full load. But I'm still driving them, picking them up, mm -hmm. uh, maybe in so between classes. They're beginning yes, that they live at home, rigor. right? They can't drive, so it's just we we reemphasize this. It's where they're going for the academics, but they're still under our care and our mm -hmm. influence. So talk to me about what a typical day of school is like in your house. Well, people think we're super structured, and that's, that's not it. I mean, it's not it. It's just uh, busy, busy, and it's almost like putting out fires. It's like, okay, who's gotta be where, at what time? <laughs> And you got to get there, and the rest of the kids have to be on board. And you know, and and every time I have a new driver, uh, I'm, I'm like, yay, a new driver to help me. You know, boy, you're the, the only mom I know who's saying yay, a new because driver. Because I need the, the help. The rest of us are going. I oh, need my the word. help. And after that college class, can you, you know, pick up some milk on the way home? You know, I need the help. I do. Yeah, and, and you and utilize that, which, which is teaching responsibility yeah. and and yeah. commitment yeah. and yeah. and all of that. How does faith infuse all that you do? Oh, oh it's amazing. Um, it, it is a miracle of God because so many people don't understand. And we're, we're also, in my thinking, at a time in history where we're coming out of this industrial age mm -hmm. to an information age. So all that information is right there on your smartphone. You can get everything that you need. And then faith, you have to have the ability to have that inward set of rules in a child, not the strict structural rules that say, well, you have to do this at this time and you can't touch this website. I find it's better to have build that faith in them yeah. and go from there. Yeah. yeah. Have have you had any of the kids that have been that have said, you know, this isn't working for me or anybody that struggled I with think, it? I uh, think academically they're very excited because it makes sense to them. They yeah. have mm -hmm. seen my husband still working on a doctorate at our age. Yeah. It's it's hard that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it, they see that it's easy to to, to get that. med school mm -hmm. done when you're 22. <laughs> well, I want to take just a moment to recap the children's names and their achievements. Let's start with Hannah, if we can. Um, Hannah is 26. She's an engineer. She has a BS in her BS in math by 17, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, then Rosanna, 24. She's the architect you mentioned. Completed a five-year program by 17. Serena is 23. She's a doctor with a BA in biology at 17. Mm -hmm. uh, Heath is 18. He is in computer. He has a, his master, a master's, master's, a master's in computer science. Wow. Keith is 15. He's at Faulkner University. He just graduated. Just graduated. <laughs> so not as we speak. He's out already. <laughs> uh, Seth, who's 13, is at Huntington College. Yes. And what's He's Seth a, studying? Sophomore history. Soft history. Uh, awesome. Uh -huh. Katrina is 11. She's at Faulkner University. Mm -hmm. she is. Mariana is nine. You saw her wants to be a doctor. Lorena at six writes her letters. Yeah. <laughs> she, she likes and to Thunder too. at four it wants to be a superhero and shows athleticism and happens to be with us today. So Thunder, we're so glad to have you in our audience. There he, there he is. And thank goodness. Looking he's every inch a superhero. 
<laughs> we've, we've only touched um, the tip of the iceberg of what this family uh, has utilized in bringing their children to their full potential and offering them just amazing hope and future. And they say you can do it too. So get a hold of the book. It's called The Brainy Bunch. Also a great resource for homeschooling families. It's available wherever books are sold. And uh, Kip and Mona Lisa, we just thank you for being mm -hmm. with us and applaud you. Well done, thank Mom you. and Dad. Well done. Praise to God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Pat, what do you think? I am inspired, but what this is is free enterprise. God has given gifts to us all in the school system. We've got, you know, compresses those gifts. And what these folks are saying is let's turn them loose. What do they like to do? What is their aptitude? Well, let them go. That goes back. I was just completing a book on uh, uh, Adams, uh, the second Adams, and uh, that fellow had learned French and he learned Latin and I think he learned Greek by the time he was 15. He went on a uh, diplomatic uh, party to Russia to, so he could interpret French for the ambassador, 15 years old. Our kids have a lot more potential and these wonderful parents that are here with us, amazing, the brainiacs.